Hey, yo, 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 and away we go. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy PlayStation reveal day. Happy first day of seeing gameplay of AEW Fight Forever. Uh, it is Mike the Ref Twitch stream here for a lovely May 24, 2023. I hope everybody's doing well. I can see Mr. Levy's in the chat. Uh, Mr. Crowder's in the chat. Life is going well. Missed half the PlayStation stream. Anything juicy? Not overly like, uh, sorry, spoilers for the next few minutes here just to give you guys a heads up. If you haven't watched the uh, PlayStation uh, previews yet, I, I, would, I would honestly say, what is the new PS? Well, uh, PlayStation, oh. Uh, PlayStation to me biggest things that came out the new uh, metal gear solid game that's coming out we got a new uh got some new stuff coming up here uh i don't have it all off the top of my head here i was going to do a little bit more of my thoughts tomorrow before the zelda stream i did find it funny that all the graphics in the videos had no mention of xbox whatsoever and literally as the show ended Oh, you saw the uh, blatant Splatoon ripoff that had to head to work? All right. Um, for the second half of it, uh, I'll say the biggest things. We got to see about five minutes of gameplay of Spider-Man uh, where uh, Peter Parker is wearing the Venom suit. And the main villain of the game appears it's going to be Craven the Hunter. So that's a thing. Uh, PlayStation has decided to go up against the Switch. Sort of. Um, you're basically allowed, to, they, they've come up with a new eight inch LED screen with a PlayStation controller, basically around it. Like basically it looks like a backbone, right? Um, and any game that is downloaded to a PS5, you can play on that via Wi-Fi. So basically it's, uh, it's something you can play with as an extra part of it. Um, they showed a little bit about the, uh, VR for uh, Resident Evil turned out to be okay. They showed a little bit more on the story mode. Kind of a Logitech G Cloud tape deal. Yeah, sort of. Honestly, it looks literally like a Switch with a PlayStation controller on the side instead of Joy-Cons. Literally, that's what it looked like to me. So, And they've announced that they have new earbuds that are coming out that'll sync to your phone and to the PlayStation. To me, it doesn't make a lick of a difference because I need it to hook up into my uh, Go XLR anyway. So, all in all, I know a lot of people are disappointed because of the lack of first party titles that were there because there was a lot of third party. A lot of third party. I'm looking forward to the, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, game that's coming out uh, the, featuring cats. I think it's a. Uh, Cat Pirates, uh, what was it, uh, the Pur, Pirates of the Purabian, that's what it was, something like that, um, yeah, it was good, I'll, I'll go a little bit more into it tomorrow, they didn't do that with the Vita or PSP, yeah, that's true, but, uh, the, the other thing to me that was really big was this morning, 10 a.m., uh, mountain time noon uh, eastern we got a chance to see our first gameplay first official gameplay of AEW fight forever now that the launch title's been announced and uh, i it's different i like it i like that it's a little bit different than what your conventional was it does look a lot like the uh the uh the N64 versions, uh, the Big Four, No Mercy, those kind of games. It does look very similar. The button style feels a lot similar. Like you got to get your momentum to get the special and then you taunt to get your finisher ready. That's the, that's the play scheme that they have for it. They did some early gameplay with it with, and you're allowed to do intergender matches, which I'm going to look forward to. I... I've always said I'm never that great with gameplay when it comes to these games. That's why we're playing the GM mode on stream here. 
for uh, WWE 2K23. But I got a feeling we're going to have to give this one an honest good shot here. Because we got AEW, we got Street Fighter, we got um, we got this GM mode going on for now. It the AEW game is gonna is looking pretty good. I'm gonna say if you're looking for up to date graphics and complete simulation, sort of like what MLB the Show is trying to do and what um, Madden tries to do with theirs, you might be a little disappointed. But if you're looking just to have some arcade fun. AEW Fight Forever looks like it's going to fit the target in spades. So I'm probably going to go book it for next week. So thanks for stopping by. Oh, yeah, no problems. I was I always sit there and I'm, I'm watching on the side a bit and I'll get into it a little bit more. I think we'll talk about it on Saturday during the uh, WWE stream or maybe even next next week. The schedule goes all over the place because, well, there's a little game on June 2nd that uh is going to throw a little monkey wrench into uh, playing next Saturday. I, I think we're going to move the WWE 2K stream earlier in the week, and then we will move our fighting stream over to the end of the week here. But, uh, yeah, no, um, once we get Street Fighter 2, I think I'm going to do a little bit about my history about it and whatnot and how much I've enjoyed what we got, but... It's de- if if you are a gaming fan, what what's that phrase? You're gonna eat well this summer, because I don't care what you like. There's always something going here. Tough night to stream with the Panthers on the verge of moving on. You know what? I, I'm I'm happy for them. I really wish the Dallas Stars all the best tomorrow because, well, frankly, they went after Mark Stone, which you know. I think it's a little bit of a BS move when uh, Jamie Benn gets suspended for two games for cross-checking Mark Stone when Alex Petrangelo decides to use his uh, stick as an axe against Leon Dreisaitl and only gets one game. So as far as I'm concerned, go eat uh, the proverbial as far as I'm concerned there, uh, Vegas uh some way to become a heel that's definitely one way to do it here so but uh let's quickly get into uh we got about what two minutes till the show's gonna start let me get a quick rundown of what we got going on tonight on dynamite well we got um based on the match that we had two weeks ago here between claudio castagnoli and ray phoenix where claudio won the uh double double jeopardy match it's going to be Claudio and uh, Wheeler Yuta taking on the Lucha Brothers for the ROH tag titles on Dynamite, which I'll, I'll get into why I I don't mind this happening here as we uh, get into the show here. We also got Tyre Valkyrie taking on Lady Frost, which I really am looking forward to. Think Jack Perry would serve better as a heel? Yes, a better as a heel and with a manager. So he le- so somebody could teach him how to talk better. Daniel Garcia versus Roderick Strong's happening tonight after what happened last week. So Roddy's getting another match here. So give him CLB again. Wouldn't hurt my feelings, but it just wouldn't make any storyline sense. We get to see the second version of the uh, trio's uh, house rules match with um, the House of Black taking on Blake Christian, Air Fox, and Metalik. It's uh, what would cause a major difference in the suspensions of what was called on the ice. They were both called the exact same. Five five minute game misconduct uh, attempt to injure. They, they were both the same penalty I spent. I'm a former referee myself. Like, literally both situations, the one one is because there's an exact rule saying that uh, cross-checking is against the rules. The other one says just trying to murder somebody is against the rules, but I digress. And what is either going to be our opening match or our main event is uh, for the AEW International Championship, Orange Cassidy taking on... Uh, Aussie Rules uh, member Kyle Fletcher. Aussie Open, sorry, not Aussie Rules. Yeah, there were both match calls because it was a cross-check right across the neck. But 
Well, as we got da we got Zanamat stopping in here. And I don't know if you guys seen the new uh the quick five minute five second teaser for uh for collision featuring Samoa Joe and Thunder Rosa, but I'm really looking forward to that new show coming up here. We're definitely going to as long as we can get it in Canada, we'll definitely do a watch along for the first show and then maybe we'll just move that into uh our uh, WWE stream right after. But yeah, the reason I was, oh, we're doing it. Yeah, we're doing Orange Cassidy and Kyle Fletcher already. But before we begin, before we get in the show, I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by. Whether you're checking this out live, whether you're checking this out on demand, whether you are uh, checking this out on YouTube, which will be up at its normal time tonight. Uh, last week was a little later because we were playing a little baseball uh, uh, after the stream. So unfortunately, my computer can't handle both. So, But I, I, I like the fact that they're doing this match here. I'm... I'm sort of not happy that they're doing this and the 21 person match next mat on uh, Sunday. Cause I'm, st I want this to feel like this is an entire week of a celebration. Hey, Astrid, how you doing folks? Make sure if you're not following Astrid here, give uh, Astrid Pizarro a follow here. She does a lot of great content, both on here and on YouTube. It is a fun time watching her talk women's wrestling in particular, as well as the NXT review on uh, OLE. They're doing a special uh, ba battleground preview and uh, follow up coming up uh, after the show next week or on Sunday here. So. So if you didn't know, uh, Kyle Fletcher's tag team partner in uh, Aussie Open is actually injured right now. So he, he's going to be out for about six or eight months. So rather than him coming to the States and not doing anything, screw it. Let's get him into some good singles matches because Kyle's definitely a great, great athlete here. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any of the... You see those three, those other two titles, the uh, IWGP and the uh, New Japan Strong uh, titles. Uh, he no longer has those as they had to forfeit them due to injury. But speaking of New Japan Strong, I want to give one quick shout out. I know we're going to talk women's wrestling a little later on, but shout out to Willow Nightingale, the first New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong women's champion who... Uh, Won a match against Mercedes Vernado, um, Mercedes Monet. Sorry, I guess you know, I gotta get the name right. Um, Monet uh, actually hurt her ankle and she's out for about two to three months. All the w best wishes on her. Oh, hello. Brainbuster in 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah, I heard it was an absolutely awesome match. Uh, happened last Sunday. So Tony Khan's going to announce the first location of collision. So now we're going to get to know if Punk's going to be on uh, collision or not. Because let's face it, if it's in uh, Chicago, Punk's going to be there. Um, reports have been coming in all day, and I believe Sean Ross Sapp confirmed it. Daly's place isn't necessarily the uh, the confirmed location as a backup, but I believe there is a backup in place. But there's also reports coming out saying that things have been patched up with CM Punk, which also doesn't surprise me because WWE basically said, get the hell out of my building just a few weeks back. So I could see things trying to get improved and not whatnot. We got so much damn news that's been coming down over the last couple days here. What is there anything in particular in terms of news that you guys are most fascinated by? The one thing that disheartens me the most is there was an announcement today that WWE is going to be uh, having some minor layoffs, 
prior to July 1st, prior to Money in the Bank. So obviously they're going to not, they don't want to send certain people to uh, London for that show. Ow. Fletcher's back is not supposed to bend like that. And critical botch there. I hope he plays up the shoulder. I don't want to say critical botch. He still hit his head. Nope, not playing the head. So Cassidy actually is going to the going to the video game technique, the Saturday Night Slam Masters technique, as I would call it. Uh, if you guys haven't seen, I was recently on a interview with uh, Adam Blank covering Saturday Night Slam Masters, the old '90s video game. Okay, time to slow it. Oh, here's the other thing. They actually revealed on the stream, the AEW uh, Fight Forever stream with Eva Luna and Orange Cassidy today. Orange Cassidy does have a sloth mode in the game. So, like, he actually has a mode where he actually... You're allowed to put his hands in his pockets, and he can move around and do certain moves, and he actually won one match by pinning someone with his hands in his pockets. The disrespect. It is priceless. Like, it, it's going to be fun to play. I know that uh, we're going to have it here on stream first night. As long as I can get the copy, uh, I got to go reserve it here. Um, probably go reserve it next Friday when I go pick up uh, WWE 2, or sorry, uh, Street Fighter 6. Sorry, I'm a physical copy guy, so I actually do go out and reserve the copy and uh, go pick it up myself, so. Yeah, they're just bringing up Mark Davis right now. I can see Fletcher and Osprey actually looking pretty close to each other. Like, uh, I know they're part of all, all part of United Empire, but oh, there's your commercial there. I don't want they don't get no free coverage on my channel. Sorry, uh, in sound there. Besides the fact I'm hungry and I don't I don't want to stare at a Whopper for thirty seconds, but um, I actually look at Kyle Fletcher and it actually it looks. It looks shocking to me that they actually do look a little bit similar. Of course, Osprey's a lot more defined and whatnot. And there's a. Uh, it, it's nice to see here that. Uh, well, I wonder how many how many. Uh, I wonder if, if um, Fletcher is going to be part of that twenty one person match in uh, on the pay-per-view here so and i don't know the exact rules of it if it's going to be 21 people in the battle royal or if it's going to be casino battle royal rules maybe they had to change it from casino to uh blackjack uh for legal reasons you're saying maybe that's what happened but i i will say ba blackjack battle royal rolls off the tongue a lot better than casino battle royal if you ask me But yeah, um, just as a heads up, and so while we're in a commercial break, and everybody seems to be taking a break right now, let me throw this up here right now. Uh, this Sunday, if you are local here, we are hosting a free watch party for AEW uh, Double or Nothing at Beercade YEG, 105 42nd Avenue, just on White Ave. It is totally free. All I ask is you pay your, you uh, tip your servers well. 
Um, we're going to be there. Uh, some of us are going to be there uh, from the uh, Backbreaker community. A few of the local wrestlers should be around there as well. Let's just go out and watch some decent wrestling. And as well, uh, tomorrow morning, myself and uh, Andre C are going to be recording a preview show for the uh, Double or Nothing event, which will be broadcast on the uh, Backbreaker YouTube channel. The wrestling channel coming up on Saturday at 8 a.m. So you can watch that prior to uh, Night of Champions coming up. And a side note to the side note to the side note. Um, immediately following Night of Champions, that's when I'm going to be doing my WWE 2K23 GM stream. Where we're going to be uh, playing out my week of SummerSlam. Okay. Orange just wasn't able to move there, I guess. But it seems to be like... You gotta think that at the pay-per-view, Orange is gonna run out of, run out of steam finally, right? I love that DDT. Who's bleeding already? I did oh, okay. Orange has got a bloody, got a blood on his chin there. I'm like, this is no Moxley match. We're not getting blood this early in the night. My God, that half and half. But I will say, Fletcher knows how to sell a DDT, that's for sure. Lots of blood in the game, maybe a bit too much, but they did leave a... Uh, they did leave a blood option for you, so you are able to turn it off. Kenny Omega has confirmed that, that you can actually turn the blood off in the game. And let's face it, if you got a game with Moxley in there, yes, you're going to get blood. But I I don't know. I, it all depends on what kind of match you're looking for. And the one thing I'm worried about is, are they going to have a streamer mode? I want it on. I don't want to be like Mortal Kombat. The other thing you got to you got to take into consideration, too. A lot of those spots with the, the those picks with the blood in them, I'm going to take a guess that the, that blood came out early in the match and it was a very long match. The frick? A spinning Michinoku driver? Okay. You got my attention, Fletcher. That that was impressive. In a position where you keep uh, Orange Cassidy protected like that as well. I am just so glad that they finally announced the date for the game regardless. Like, we can have our own thoughts about it as we get in here. We'll, you know what? There very well could be not just a... Uh, I was just thinking about the Zodiac. There might not necessarily be a uh, just an on-off button for the uh, blood. There very well could be a slider. And if there's a slider, I think that I think that might be more what you're up l looking for, Zodiac. You could be uh, like you could have some blood. Lot. Here comes the pain. I, I would laugh if they put that there for it, but or just. Your, your top op option is Moxley match. Let's get that first one out. Now, help me out with this chat. Let me... Th As they lose communication with one of the cameras right in the middle of the match, that's great. Somebody pulled the plug on the hard cam, it looks like. Oh, there we go. Now it's back. Now, hear me out, chat. This is something I was thinking about here. So Cassidy's got this Blackjack Battle Royal going on on Sunday. 
Why would you seriously put a title defense on tonight just because you have to defend it again in four nights anyway? Nice kick. Michigan crew driver of his own. Oh my God. Really? Wow. Twisting tombstone. Okay. I haven't seen that move since Just Incredible did it in ECW. Because that used to be Just Incredible's finisher. The twisting, the, the spinning tombstone. Well, the one thing I, I'm happy about with this is the fact that this match... This is a good match to start this this show off on. You got you got a Vegas crowd that's starting to get ready for what's coming up this weekend. But I do have to say that the, they do need to find a way to make a way, maybe try and sell some tickets out of this because I don't know if you guys have heard. No way. Oh no, they're they're gonna reverse this somehow. Oh, God. Yep. Super Mochinoku Driver Nation Bullshit. God. Trust me, I'm not making that face for my own health. That. Wow. I don't know if I've seen that before. I've seen that kind of hair before. Because definitely that's not a hair that you want to be seen with the championship, right? Ugh. All right, here we go. Hammerlock. Oh, yes, sorry, Zodiac. I sort of, you know, drifted off a little bit. You know, you know I do that about three million times here. Uh, so ticket sales for this event, last year was a sellout, right? This year, I think they've only gotten about 8,000. Last I heard, it was between seven and 8,000. It wasn't anything overly special. And I will say it's probably because of the main event. All right, we'll take that. I'm going to take it solely off the fact that the main event is not what it needs to be for this show. Like, you can call it the punk effect all you want. I don't think it's a fact that the punk, that the punk, that CM Punk is that up on the roster or whatnot. Yes, punk sold tickets, but to me, it's not about, it, it's not about having punk there. To me, it's, not having somebody develop to take that spot. Punk can sell as many tickets as he wants. But I still think you have other talents that could do that. Like if you had MJF versus Mox here, the rematch. If you had MJF versus Cole, I think you still sell more tickets. Like, they're trying to develop their own talents internally, but they're not there yet. Good things take time. Oh, yeah, Brawl killed the flow even to today. Yeah, like, you want to build up your own talents? It, it steps. And Brawl Out just brought him down about their six, seven steps because your top talent. Oh, here we go. TK put all his chips in with Punk with no plan B. Yeah, like, 
I, I think he counted on having a lot more top level stars that he could play with in terms of poker chips right now. And the fact that Danielson needs an e easier schedule. You need Punk, who basically is going to need. He's going to need the Roman schedule when he comes back, if he comes back. Because every time he gets in the ring, he gets injured. Okay, that hurt. And Juice is like, wow. Talk about intensity. Well, it looks like uh, looks like we're gonna have to get another partner for uh, Ricky Starks here, but and Omega is fantastic, but he, he needed the break, and he he may not be known developed enough to carry a major brand at the level W. I think Omega is. I just think you have to give people a reason to get behind him. It's like anything else; you do have to find a reason to get behind people. And uh, it's like I was saying about this main event. I don't feel Omega was when they had Cody. I, I do think that there's a possibility there's a little bit involved, but not a lot, to be, to be frank. I don't feel that. Uh, I think Omega's enough to handle it because I think this is going to be a distinctly different product than what. AEW fans or WWE fans look for in many ways. And it's going to be even more apparent when this division between the two brands shows up, which I pretty much feel that there is going to be a soft brand split. We talked about it last week, but um, let me get to the other question here. So I was thinking about the question you posed to us. The reason for having the title fight today and then again in four days is because it generates eyes on the talent because the most popular only care about title fights. It's fair. Like, don't get me wrong. The, the the problem I had with it is, as a wrestler, and the fact that there's no champion's advantage going into Sunday, and Orange is beat up as he is, I would have just laid out, let Fletcher win. Then I'll get my title back on Sunday. Sort of the Crash Holly mentality. When he was the hardcore champion in that 15-minute battle royal WrestleMania 15, there's some bad memories for you. Where uh, Crash ended up winning the title in the last five seconds, apparently. But uh, in terms of ticket sales, in terms of guys like like I think Omega could carry a brand. I think the Bucks could carry a brand. You just need a storyline to keep them going and. Right now, the only story I would say the re the real story that's keeping things going is uh, Jericho and Cole. I've said that for the last three weeks here. That uh, the uh, the storyline between those two is maybe one of the most fleshed out stories that uh, AEW has right now. I love the fact that. Uh, Impact Wrestling has got commercials going on during uh, AEW programming. I, I love to see it. Just I'd love to see more of that. I'd love to see more indie shows get some commercial time on TSN during this time. But uh, I think now that there's going to be a split, but like... It's almost obvious that they're going to have even a soft split if they don't have a hard split to the uh, to the roster here in AEW when Collision starts up because, well, frankly, they got enough talent that they don't need to be wasting them all the time. With that soft split, you're going to have to come up with some more stories because you're going to run out of matchups a lot quicker. Uh, we got the uh, promos going on here. So 
See, I'm watching this promo right now, and it just doesn't scream to me that this guy's got the swagger to be a champion. Like, he's got his arms drooped down. He's looking like this. He's... Like, you could tell a lot by body posture as to see where where you're at. He just doesn't look confident. Like he's got everything from here down. Like his face, he, he he's fine. Like he's emoting everything right with his face and getting the words out exactly the way he needs to. But his body posture is just, it, it's slumped. It's, it's like he doesn't have all the pieces together. He's tried too hard, maybe. But, but it's for people that aren't experienced enough. They actually take their time and they end up there's, they had to focus on one part where they kept fixing the other two. So, the big thing about this match here is the fact that Mark Briscoe, who is going to be the special referee for this tag match at the pay-per-view, and... If we're going to talk about Jeff Jarrett and his uh, Southern wrestling uh, shenanigans, I believe is the best way to put it. Um, with those kind of shenanigans going on, they uh, there is a possibility that Briscoe could turn and become a heel here at this point. I don't know why you do it. Just because Jay is... Uh, Jay was so popular with everybody, and Mark Mark's living off that right now. Are they Carney? Yes, I could tell you that easily. This is like a prototypical Bret Hart promo. is unloading he actually <laughs> my god that's funny brought out Di brought up Dixie's name brought out TNA oh I, I love these guys but the first half of the promo, it's textbook heart promo where you put over your opponent first and then you say why you're going to beat him. Textbook. All right. Ha! 
They had to mute it. Whoa. Okay. All right, I can see where we're trying to get the dissension here. And you do realize Mark, I don't believe, has TV. Or acts like he doesn't have TV, so that, that this makes sort of half sense, I don't know. But of course, here comes the opponents. Oh, 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 took the taste right out of his mouth. Ha! I like that. I like that. He just hates everybody. And he's tired of the carny stuff. Because I think we've all said it. Jay Lethal is a, is a pretty damn good talent. Oh, and here comes another promo segment. Sammy's got the charisma. I think Sammy, this may not be the time, but he definitely has the potential to be that A-list champion that they need. And you notice that he's not wearing any JAS stuff here right now? So, is this going to end up being like a three faces, one heel kind of thing? Oh my god. Sorry, I just checked out, uh, if you check out my Twitter account, I'm just retweeting this right now. So... Oh, they're using luchador rules tonight. He has a lateral charisma. He stopped leaning into the whole tie heat. He's gotten better. Absolutely. So, did you guys hear that for the House of Black match here tonight? They're using luchador rules. So, for those that aren't familiar, tags are not needed in the ring. Literally, all you have to do is get out of the ring and your tag has been made. But uh, anyway, back to my point here about Sean Ross Sapp's report. We saw Kyle Fletcher earlier here, and I talked about his part, his uh, partner, Mark Davis, right, who had, uh, had to go for surgery, and he's going to be out for a while. Tony Khan paid for that surgery. Like, you want to talk about brownie points here? You want to talk about things that, you know, or get you some good karma around here? That, uh, that's definitely going to do it. Oh, sorry. Commercial, nobody getting free advertisements. So that to me is a very feel good story and good on Tony Khan for what he did. And he's willing to help out people. Like I'm sure that he was going to have Ozzy open, uh, in here a little bit longer. Take 
we could see Aussie Open take on FTR, right? Like, that would have been a match I would have loved to see. Sorry, just kind of... Noticing my seat's a little down, slunk a little down for a little bit there. But, yeah, like... Just having the, the ability to uh, take care of other wrestlers or wrestlers that you're attempting to bring in. When contracts come up, people remember that stuff. And now, especially, like, let's look at the news headlines for this week. You had Tony Khan turn around and say he's going to pay for surgery for somebody who isn't even signed to him. And on the other side, you got somebody who's leading the layoffs. Now, don't get me wrong, Tony Khan is not all sunshine. Lollipops, I think we've all learned this. Uh, Ariel Monroe and uh, Leva Bates will be clear examples to that, where he needs to work on communication and whatnot. But still, this is damn good PR for uh, Tony here, right? Now, here's an interesting factoid I also got this week. Like, Let's fast forward here to this tag match. For this six-man tag, AR Fox on, uh, on TV for AEW, ROH, AEW, whichever, 0-6. Yet he's still getting this title shot. He's had multiple title shots already. I believe he had a shot at the TNT Championship. He's also had a shot at the um, International Championship, if I do remember right. He's also had... I think he had another shot with the trios. Uh, teaming up with Top Flight. That's right. One of the first... Uh, one of the first defenses of the trios championship on, uh, on TV. So once the bell goes, are they going to bring the lights back down to where they were before? Or are they going to leave it like this fractured lighting like this? That would actually be pretty cool if they even had fractured lighting. Wow, they really know what's going on here with the timing. Now they gotta teach these referees. You put one in one in each hand, and then you put the other one on both hands and put it over your head. Okay, this is a little unique. I don't know if I like it a whole lot with the uh, the lights the way they are right now around the outside. Well, he's out, and there you go. Metal League's in. This is why I like the luchador rules like this. Oh, well, Malachi's ready. And Air Fox doesn't use the, the method of surprise. He just goes for it. Oh, Christian is, I, I think Christian's there to take the pin, to be perfectly honest here. So I guess you really don't need a tag to do double team maneuvers here either. Ow. 
literally on the back of his head there. Say so it's a very nice story what they're doing here with the with the House of Black and these open rules. Like I said, the aesthetics of the light, I don't know. You can see most fans, they're actually uh Ow. Okay, so you can do normal tags if you want to stay in there. Oh, nice. Not sure how it is for the audience, but I think it looks cool. I, yeah, by the way, hi, Jagger. Good to see you here tonight. To me, it just feels, oh, Jesus. Christian grabbed his neck, and I don't think that was supposed to happen. But he turned it into that shot. That was... Brody just said, oh, nope. I, I don't mind it. It's just, like I said, it's probably hard for people to... You can see the people leaning towards the dark spots. Like, you don't see many heads in the light. All right, here comes the Air Fox dive. But I, I commend AEW for trying something different. Like, this makes it a ton different than the uh, tag division, right? With the open house rules and whatnot. That look on Julia's priceless there. He posted for way too damn long there, but that's okay. We'll we'll deal with it. This is where we're we gonna get the submission. I'd like to see Buddy get a few wins out of this. Well, that's one way to break it up, maybe. No! And Brody just brings him over and says, nope. Like, who's going to stop this trio? But I do love the fact that they're doing something different. They're doing something unique. I know we talked about this earlier. But they're literally just They're not they're not doing anything like defending the trio's titles is just not just something. It's actually decent here. So Danielson lost last year's Anarchy in the arena. I wonder if he's going to lose this one. Oh, they finally showed the poker chip. It's been forever since they've been, since they've done that. What do you guys think about Hangman and his uh, eye patch there? Thank you. 
I love the uh, CM Punk reference there. I want to look at again that jacket that Moxley has. It looks pretty sharp. Alrighty. So basically these kind of promos, this is you gotta let the elite win that then. Oh great, we get an MGF promo. I wonder if it's gonna be live. Ugh. A live MGF promo. We haven't we haven't had one of those. Hell, it's been three weeks. I, I, I think since they had all four pillars in the ring for one night. To me, that uh, it's actually helped the fact that they haven't had the, the champ out there. And he hasn't had an opportunity to stretch his promo all too far. And the fact, here, here's the interesting factoid I got right now on this. They're putting... Like, normally when you're doing your segments, like the way you're booking your show, to go to the go-home one, um, you want to put your main event on last. So you, that's the selling point to the pay-per-view, right? You put your, your, your main event, your heavyweight title match, the match that's supposed to be... That should be your main event spot for the, the show going into the pay-per-view. They're not doing that here. Unless they're going to use Rampage for that, but let's face it, not a lot of people are watching Rampage these days. BCC needs to be utilized to develop talent. The talent on the team is too amazing not to do otherwise. Abs well, one thing I could say right now is the way you could book this, and I'll talk about this a little bit more on the uh on the preview show coming up this Saturday on our uh, wrestling YouTube channel. Uh, when it comes to the, the BCC in this situation, you can have them lose, stay off TV and show up on collision. The next time they're on TV is on collision. The elite control dynamite and the BCC control collision. Uh, there have been uh, talks recently that um, Brian Danielson will be helping with the creative on collision itself. So it just makes sense to have them over there. But I think tonight what you do is you end up having the, uh, the BCC lose the tag match to the Lucha Brothers uh, thanks to some interference by uh, the Elite whether that be a straight up win for the Lucha Brothers or whether it be just a DQ schmoz, it really doesn't matter at this point, if you ask me. But uh, if you go on from there, it just fuels that little bit of fire for the Anarchy in the Arena match. They very well could be using that as your main event spot here tonight. I hope they don't do a brand split. I hope they just space things out properly between the shows. I, I know we talked about that last week, Dark Nick. By the way, good to see you here too, my friend. Um, what I think will happen is you will have sort of a pseudo brand split. Like it's not going to be an official they're here, they're here. I think that would be absolutely stupid. Ah, MGF taking a shot at Shivani. Uh What I think they'll do is then, they're not, like I said, they're not going to announce an official brand split, but what they'll do is they'll keep feuds on one show or the other. 
and have some general talents work those shows. Like, you're not going to get the same feud on Dynamite the same week as you're going to get Collision. To me, that's a smart money right there, is the fact that you're going to have more feuds, and you'll have different feuds going on. But if you're going to drag out the same roster to do the same feuds over two shows, your talent's going to get stale pretty quick in the eyes of a lot of talent here, or a lot of fans for that matter. And where the hell did he get that suit from? Virgin Vegas. Only when you're dealing with the Golden Knights, my friends. I'd just like to know what, what couch has uh, been deflowered of all its fabric for that jacket. That jacket is glorious. Ugh. I'm just trying to figure that's a floral pattern. Okay, that makes sense. To go with his Burberry uh, scarf. I could never carry pants like those. They would get way too dirty, way too quick. Is it the outside or is he wearing it inside out? He could actually have the same suit and just try to wear it twice for the same weekend. I, guess I love the passion here. Do you have a double turn in this match, Jungle Boy and Sammy? It would take a lot for both those to happen. Sammy, I don't think it really matters either way. People are going to cheer whether he does a cool move anyway. All right, MJF, you you had us going there, and now you're starting to uh, slow things down a little bit here. Oh, we're bringing this up again. Oh, now he's going to talk about screw jobs. Oh, now he's doing a punk shot, so that's always great, too. I I'm sorry. It All right, I, I'm trying to feel this for MJF, but once again, like you're, you're in that point here where you almost feel like he's tried too hard at that point. About the brand split, I want the stars to get the time off they need, but I love the days when top talent showed up twice a week for Raw, SmackDown, Nitro, Thunder. Yeah, I, I get that too. But here's the other part that I'm up that I think of too how much talent isn't getting any time 
Like, you're not going to be able to find out if you have some A-plus stars if you don't give them all a chance to shine, right? That That's my thinking of it. MJF isn't watching, bro, but who, who should... Who should be more emulating in this situation? I would say watch tapes of Brock. He's doing the same damn thing. There's toilets in the 99 cent store? I didn't even know that. I can almost imagine what they use for toilet paper there. Ooh. All right. So he's actually doing it? Well, as soon as he announced that he's climbing Mount Everest, you know, they're they're not going to... Uh, they're obviously not going to let him win the championship right now. All right, here comes Jungle Boy. Oh, they got Sammy coming out next. Okay. All right, are we going to get another talkie talkie out of Sammy or no? Oh, and there's Jungle Boy. <laughs> Jungle Boy looks like, oh, where, 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 where am I? But I like your guys' thoughts. Again, let's get, let's get Jungle Boy heal. Like, I do think he needs to get a little closer to his tipping point. If you're going to turn Jungle Boy heel, the way to maybe do it, have uh, have Jungle Boy basically have the match won, and then have MJF beat, uh, beat whoever he beat down, whether it be Sammy, whether it be Darby. Have MJF steal that victory. There's a possibility for that to happen, and then you just get to a point where it just snaps out that way ah uh, yes we go from jungle boy to uh, CLB I love Arn Anderson here with with a guy like Wardlow because Wardlow my opinion I just don't see him having the uh, bass in his voice to be that overloaded powerhouse it's almost like having that uh, tough guy with the little Lil Sapo, he's gonna be nice. I'm gonna beat you. It just doesn't, you don't take it seriously, right? Ah, we're getting our women's match early tonight. 
So they have they have been mixing things up. Sorry, uh I just love the growth of Taya here and just having her the way her growth has gone from after what happened with uh, the Frankie Monet thing out in um, NXT and then getting back into impact and uh, dominating the way that she did back in AAA where she she got some work in and now here in AEW. Could you imagine Wardlow with Bobby Heenan as his manager? <laughs> That's what I would think of that combination. Like, Wardlow could be that guy that would have taken out Hulk Hogan in the 80s. Now, I've seen Lady Frost work a couple matches in Impact when she was still contracted there, a few indie matches. The, these two styles are going to work very well together because just like Excalibur was mentioning, Lady Frost comes from the uh, comes from a gymnast background. And with Taya with that Lucha Libre background of hers, it, this should be a very good match to watch. But I, I find it weird that it's going to be a whole different style that uh, Taya is going to have to face on Sunday here with Jade. And it looks like they were trying to do a little bit of a that Lucha Libre style was just half a half a step slower than what it should have been there. Maybe just the nerves getting out of it first here. Oh, nice. All right, double or nothing sales starting on Friday. I will admit they got some great shirts. Not that I'm, you know, plugging my own or not plugging my own, but definitely the uh, Street Fighter versus uh, AEW shirts are highly recommended. Got the Sagat Brian Danielson shirt on tonight. So, coming up on coming up on Sunday, you got Ty Valkyrie versus Jade, which now we don't like the first match. I have to admit. It was a good start, but it finished with a dud because they tried to, they had that screwy finish with the stipulation and then the roll up just didn't work out properly. I think there's a way they could fix that up here, clean it up. Oh my goodness. That clothesline, my goodness. All right, Jade, what are you not wearing this time? It's like one big nylon without... Uh... Or like a... Sh I, w I wonder what would happen if you walked down the street in an outfit like that. You definitely have some eyes turning. It is Vegas, so I would be wary of doing something like that. When I logged into Fight to Start Dynamite earlier, there was an ad for Fight. If you purchase Double or Nothing, Forbidden Door, All Out, or Full Gear, you get all four for... Oh, wow. I do know that I looked in this morning for uh, for Double or Nothing. Like, I had to book it for uh, our watch party on Sunday. And uh, I didn't... Uh, I didn't see that there. I saw a nice big forty nine 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 bill for uh, for double or nothing. So Zodiac would wear it. Okay, <laughs> Ophelia, we're calling the cops because that's yours. 
By the way, good to see you here tonight, Ophelia. Always appreciate having you around. Like, like seriously, that that outfit is just ugh. Seriously, Hogan is wearing less. I don't know. How am I doing? I'm doing good. Like, I know a lot of people. Like, uh, I'm gonna talk about it tomorrow. Um, I'll talk about it tomorrow a little bit more, but prior to our uh, Breath of the Wild stream, but I was. I was actually pretty impressed with what came out during the PlayStation presentation. It was, uh, it was almost to the point where it actually convinced me that I might have to pick up a PS5. But then all of a sudden Xbox pulls out the ultimate heel move and uh, tweets out a screen with nine of those uh, games coming to Xbox at the same time. It, it it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun to see what these next two months have uh just a quick note for everybody if you are into video games and you're into uh presentations i just signed up today to be an official co-streamer for uh the summer games fest coming up on june 8th so june 8th in the afternoon i will be having it on my twitch stream here um with my reactions as we go along here I will try to keep it as, you know, I, I, whenever I do this, I do try to keep it more focused on the games itself, but I definitely will give my thoughts as we go through. Plus I got some new announcements that I'm coming up with next week. I can't announce them right now because I don't have the overlays done yet. So, <laughs> but you can see Lady Frost does have that experience. Like she has... She's had work in uh, NWA as well, besides Impact. I, I like the fact that they're giving these ladies time here. That's that's one of the big things. Like going into this pay per view, that I would have to say, out of the two matches, whether it be Tony Storm and Jamie Hayter or uh, Taya and Jade, this one here did need a little bit more to develop on the uh, on the main show. I would, for lack of a better term, because most of this feud, like don't get me wrong, we did have one match on uh, Dynamite. The whole uh, can't use the road to Valhalla. But uh, the old can't use the road to Valhalla match. But other than that, most of this got developed on Rampage. And if you aren't watching Rampage, then this. I uh, uh, gotta love the old curb stomp. And here comes Sterling with his grit on his face that. And the ref is saying, oh, back up. We got to have a little bit more time here. Oh. Nice backbreaker. She might have been looking for something a little more impactful, but the backbreaker might have just been uh, a reactionary move because she didn't have the full grip. And now Jade's taking full credit for, uh, that's my move, that's my move. Thing is, Jade does know how to counter it, and I, I, I did love the counter that they had, the roll through as it goes through. That That's like your only... But I will but I do like the fact that they're using this match. They're getting it over. And they're making Saturday Sunday's match feel oh here we go. Right here 
All right, is Punk going to be there? He doesn't blink. He blinks every six hours. Central. There you go. Yep. Punk's back. Can't wait till they dive into Regina. <laughs> Worst kept secret. I'll, I'll, I'll be frank with you. I don't think it was a... I, I don't think earlier this week that it actually was going to happen. And just to clarify something that came up, um, there, there's been a little bit more... You guys kill me with your pronunciation of Regina. That's how they say it. It's complete. That's completely the way they do it. And yes, I do realize the joke in, in lied there. But anyway, back to my comment here. There was reports of last week of uh, AEW uh, actually sending uh, lawyers out to CM Punk and sending out court documents. Um, most of these documents were directly related, apparently, to having Punk stop basically stop disparaging the company. Basically just to cease and desist of stop. You want to work with us? Well, shut the f up and well, sorry, let me correct myself. Shut the f up and uh, stop, stop bashing our company so often. And it, it was either funny because I know uh, it was brought up by a few people and it makes a lot of sense to me you know it's amazing how sam punk is a little bit more cooperative a little more positive a little more sensitive after the fact he walks into uh, wwe raw and sufficiently gets his ass booted out of there impact wrestling got to say his lows they got booted out of there Went to the ROH tapings and was politely asked, why the hell are you here? CM Punk is not a very welcome man right now. And he, I think he's having to start to realize that he's not going to get many chances. And the fact that Tony Khan is bending over backwards for him. This might be one of the best things to happen to wrestling in general not just AEW is the fact that the talent the good talent has the power the most popular talent doesn't now punk don't get me wrong he sells a ton of tickets we talked about that earlier tonight realistically they don't need punk yeah like they do need to work on life after punk right now but I do see for the next couple of years trying to get that extra little push, that extra little plunge, that extra little pop from CM Punk. Oh, it's all right. Just coming up with some stuff here that showed up. Found most of his matches boring. Well, he's been gone for so long and... MJF carried him. I would say that most of the talents that were in the ring with him at the beginning carried him through most of his matches. Darby Allen gave him a hell of a match. Um, MJF did. John Moxley did. Why is WWE always late signing free agents? AEW get them so quick. WWE don't get anybody. By the way, thank you for the uh, chat there, Marquise. I don't think there's necessarily a 
a question of WWE late signing free agents. There's just a lot of wrestlers that they don't want right now. And the announcement that they had this week of, uh, or just today, of possibly not having uh, having some layoffs come up here, they're going to have to clean out some of these people before they can start signing people. But I think Jay White was a big miss by WWE. I think there's, to be perfectly frank, I think we're going to get a lot of swapping back and forth of talent here coming up in the next year. And I don't think it's just going to be Vince coming back makes harder for WWE to get talent. Absolutely. That's like the biggest point in the world right now. The worst part about it is the fact that everybody's seen what a post Vince McMahon era is. What a, uh, what a life without Vince McMahon and WWE is and everybody liked it. Now that he's back and now that part of his contract is that he could be fired for misconduct, but other than that, he's got carte blanche to stay as long as he wants means you're probably going to see him for a good five, 10 years yet. And a lot of free agents that might spook them off. I could see a few of them going for a payday. It's weird. I could see some guys like, well, here's the biggest example. You got a guy like uh, Brian Cage, who absolutely was dead fast heading to WWE. It was almost like a slam dunk. Him and Tony Khan were fighting. Melissa Santos and Tony Khan were fighting. Oh my God, we got an Oilers jersey in the front row. Let's go. <laughs> God bless the Oilers jersey with the Blue Jays cap in the front row. Sorry, completely off topic, but just as important. There's also a new flag in the front row. Whoa, I didn't notice that. <sighs> That's the Oilers. <sighs> I'll give you that one. Closest the Oilers will get to a ring. Whoa! You left your house and walked into mine. Ophelia, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the new emotes and welcome to the Players Club. Appreciate you lots. Appreciate everybody being here tonight. And I love that Roddy's here by himself here with uh, with Cole. Yet there's like 300 people here coming with Jericho. It's in the front row opposite the stage. I just saw the adduct shift during the first. Oh, okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Purple hat is back. Oh, thank you for reminding me. I got to make an adjustment to. Uh, I got to make adjustment to our uh, our hats that are available in our merch store. I will have that up hopefully next week here. Maybe with a new logo going in there. Um, stay tuned. There's your first hint right there. But I got to get a purple one in there. Well, definitely check out the merch that we have right now. Um, so basically, they're talking about the whole harmless agreement right now that they're going to have an unsanctioned match going at the pay-per-view, which if I'm Jericho, I'm wearing this outfit to the pay-per-view because then Cole can't touch me. It's sort of what we call the Road Warrior effect.
But uh, I will announce that uh, I'll, I'll get, I'm not going to get into the full details right now, but starting next week, we're going to have a charity month for the month of June. So watch this. They do it now with uh, Juan Cole to just win so he can move out on the MJF and get the belt. I don't think they're going to do it yet. That, that actually very well could be the... Uh, what I think they do... What I think they do is actually they run the CM Punk feud after this with MJF as Collision comes back so he can get his title rematch and MJF wins that. Cole wins it at full gear. As he's the last hope for AEW at a major pay-per-view before MJF does the bidding war of 2024. I love the fact that Cole is probably the one wrestler out of this new group that is just so comfortable on the mic as he is in the ring. You could set up a Bullet Club golf rain with, uh, or gold rain with uh, Adam on top, yeah. I love autocorrect. It's so much fun. Whoa, okay. Now they're going to attack Roddy. Oh, God. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, now he's... He wants to get this match. This is such typical Jericho shtick, but it's so good. That's the thing. It's a it's a part that drives you nuts, right? That's it. He's gonna break your legs, break your arms, break your jaw, break your fingers.
Okay, who do we got? Wait a second. Yeah! Here we go! Sabu! This man still can go. Folks, I know he doesn't look like much, but we've seen his last few matches just recently. He still can go. Like, not... Let's just face it, he ain't gonna go the level that he was before, but he still can... pull some pretty good shots in here. And for those of you that are uh, millennial slash never watched ECW, this guy... This guy would put all the aerial stars of uh, AEW to shame in his prime for some of the stuff he would pull. The kamikaze stuff that he would do. Oh, yeah, and he loved chairs. <laughs> okay, I, I like this. I like something different. And it is a person on Jericho's past because Jericho is an ex-ECW. And Menard's pissed. He got hit with a chair in the face. Atta boy. I, I do like... I do like the fact that they set up the match like that just to get everybody out of there. It makes a lot of sense. And now that now that they're going with the uh, video package for the women's title match coming up at the pay-per-view, I, I appreciate this too for the mere fact that as we've seen the matches with all these ladies involved, the five or six that are involved, I believe samesies is the uh, best way to explain it. So it's Sabu and Roderick Strong with the against the JAS. Oh, here we go. And I like this. Th this is an old ECW trick. You have two you have two factions that have a feud with multiple members. You bring them all down and then all of a sudden as soon as the one segment's done, you go right into that next match. I like that kind of booking strategy here. It sort of doesn't take away the feel of anything here, right? The only thing you could say is this match wasn't advertised till late afternoon. But it's still going to be a hell of a freaking match because, well, let's face it, Roderick Strong's a hell of a wrestler and so is Garcia. Like, to me, if you're looking at people that are going to carry that title after MJF in terms of new crop of talent, you got to look at your Sammy Guevara's and you have to look at Daniel Garcia. Like, I think Daniel Garcia is about three steps away, but at the same time, he is definitely on that plane of getting there. Less downtime makes it feel like let's sail in the ring after a confrontation. Absolutely. And the fact that uh, Garcia is still looking conflicted. Because if, you if you've noticed his last few matches here on Dynamite, he has looked conflicted because he's lost because of uh, the sports entertainment aspects of what he does during a match. Oh, shit. 
Pardon my French, but if you guys just heard that, Ozzy Open has officially signed with AEW. All right. Makes a little bit more sense why they got the title match tonight, but... But you still got to fill out that roster with uh, Collision, right? So it's actually a pretty smart move if you ask me. Like you need to get experienced tag teams in here because right now a lot of the tag teams are starting to form trios. Like hell, even the acclaimed are starting to wrestle as trios wrestlers now more than they are an actual tag team. So... I hope the fact that they bring in groups that are going to be absolutely separate, they're not going to, they're not always going to be like, uh, oh, we'll put two and throw somebody in to make a third. Let's get some actual trios out here that actually want to work, right? Oh, I saw Tony Khan tweet out the graphic about an hour ago. Okay. Yeah, they just announced it on the broadcast. I try to... Uh, I try to not watch my phone as much as I can during the show. I do glance at it once in a while here because, you know, some messages do come in. I like the acclaim not being a tag team. It takes them out of the tag title race but still leaving it relevant. Absolutely. And the thing I like right now is our picture in picture involves uh, Impact Wrestling and AEW all at the same time on our TVs. I call this a win. Timestamp looks like it was right after the opening match. Okay, that makes sense. But they just announced it on the program right now. So I could see them doing that. Fletcher had such a hell of a match that, you know. And I'll still say this. I think the fact that Tony Khan is still still paying for Mark Davis' surgery. Like he had no reason he had to. Like if he signed the, if they signed the contract for him after the after the injury happened, that's just a bonus on Tony Cobb for just what kind of guy he is, right? Like to me, I am absolutely thrilled to see what uh, see what the future holds for AEW here as a whole. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stream both Dynamite and uh, Collision as we go forward. We'll see what happens here, but maybe if we keep going with the uh, 2K23 GM, we might be able to do it, but we're supposed to have some sanity hours too, you know, you're actually having a life, et cetera, kind of thing. Garcia, Ty just used that three matches ago. It's one thing I can't stand. It's one thing I really can't stand about matches. Playing and getting the AEW game, I am pre-ordering it when I go pick up Street Fighter VI. We will be playing it first night, June 29th when it comes out. We are definitely getting that. Um, got a chance to watch that Twitch stream today. I don't know if you, uh, I, I know you retweeted it, but I don't know if you got the chance to watch it. The, uh, playthrough with Orange Cassidy and Evil Uno here. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they had there. So, but yeah, we're definitely going to be, uh, we're, we're definitely going to be playing it here on the channel. You're on the review list for it. Cool. I'm very happy to see that. Like, I do know that I'm picking up a physical copy because, you know, I love the physical copies of everything. So shout out to GameSpot and Leduc, by the way. They've, they've done me so well. It's going to be funny when I go in there and they're like, you canceled this three weeks ago because I did have a pre-ordered I believe around the la around the revolution time is when I pre-ordered it. And then when I went to go upgrade my uh Street Fighter 6 uh 
when I went to upgrade my Street Fighter 6, we'll, uh... I actually canceled and used that money towards Street Fighter 6, so... I, w I wonder what I'm going to be doing here now. Don't remember her last name. First name's Kira, who's managing it out there now. Unless... She I, I was out there a couple weeks ago. I I usually end up there on Tuesdays and it's her day off, but the staff there are absolutely, they're doing really good. And uh, things have cleaned up around there. And I'll, if you're looking for used games, they are actually doing a real good job out there. Ah, okay. You traded a few former managers in the Duke. Yeah, I believe Kira's out of Edmonton here. Because I know uh, the other one I go to is on Stony Plain Road on the West End. Just because it's right near my main shoot job. And uh, they, they mentioned that she was out there as well, so... Managed four locations. Okay. Well, you know what? Like, I know a lot of people crap on stores like that. I, I love going there. I love picking up my Funko Pops from there. I, As you can see, I got the collection up in the corner over here. They're all from there. And, uh, oh, God. God, do I love Roddy when he starts getting out of roll for his, uh, his backbreakers. Nice. That brain buster into a backbreaker. You gotta love when you have Sabu there, this. Glad you're there. Not sad you left. Yeah, it's like most jobs, right? And I think everybody could agree with that. Oh, here we go. They're showing Willow against uh, Mercedes here, right? Yep. Look at that bounce of the head of Mercedes there. I'm not going to say I'm a collector connoisseur kind of thing with it, but I do have quite a few. Um, say probably... Maybe one of these times I'll take a picture of it. I do know that uh, once we get up to 500 subs on our uh, gaming channel, we are going to... Uh, we're going to do a house or a basically stream, streaming tours of uh, our setups uh, for each of the guys that are involved as they're going to run through the double or nothing card right now. Mercedes was supposed to win. It's what you, yeah, they, she basically broke her ankle mid match and it appears that they made a call on the fly. And we'll pretty much confirm that if they do another quick title change right after, like, what are the two shows that coming up after, uh, after she got the title? So, yeah, very happy for Willow. Like, she's, a great personality, a great person to have there. Um, hell of a wrestler, too. Like, a lot of it's on charisma. A lot of it's on uh, a lot of uh, intangibles, and Willow definitely has that. And I mean, no pun intended here to the LPW women's champion or the LPW grand champion. Sorry. I almost said women's champion. No, that's the grand champion, Zoe Sager. Who, which I consider right now, maybe if she's not the top in Canada right now, she is definitely in that conversation and deserves a hell of a lot more exposure than she gets right now. I'll just flat out say that. But, uh, Speaking of things that need to be attended more and got to see, for those in the Edmonton area, don't forget, coming up tomorrow, or sorry, Sunday, 
We are going to be hosting an AEW watch party here for Double or Nothing uh, at Beercade YEG. Free. Absolutely free. Uh, stop by, tip your servers, and come watch the show with a lot of wrestling fans. So it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. Andre C and myself are going to have an AEW Double or Nothing prediction show coming up on our YouTube channel. Uh, coming up uh, this Saturday, it'll drop at 8 a.m. Uh, Mountain Time, so you can watch it prior to uh, the uh, Clash of Champions sh- or Night of Champions show uh, from WWE. I'll be on later on that day with uh, WWE 2K23, but yeah, uh, her gig a shout out for Bret Hart. Yeah, well. Brett knows talent, and Zoe definitely is one of those talents that uh, you know. It's actually the, I believe it's the second most watched video on our YouTube channel right now. Is actually uh, Jack Pride versus uh, Zoe Sager from Force Pro Wrestling back in 2019. I gotta work on getting a lot of these videos that I st- I have like four bookcase drives full of matches here i still have to edit and get up so hopefully i can clean those up and finally get those out of my hair here let you guys enjoy the immense talent that we have here in alberta and like there's five major wrestling shows coming up on tv this weekend and we're getting three cards here in edmonton this weekend for local wrestling it's one of the most jam-packed uh, weeks that we've seen in a very long while here. But this being the last commercial break, just as we get into it, just to just give you a little bit of update what we're doing with the schedule here. Um, tomorrow, I'll be on tomorrow afternoon with uh, Breath of the Wild. Uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. We just finished the first Divide Beast. Now we want to work on to another one. Hopefully we get over there in a bit. Uh, then f- nothing on Friday I do believe WWE 2K23 will be uh, our GM mode SummerSlam will be coming up directly after Night of Champions uh, on my Twitch channel here Sunday we have uh, of course we're hosting our uh, Double or Nothing show at uh, Beer KYG Monday I might move the WWE stream for that week to Monday or Tuesday. I'm just going to, I'll confirm everything by Friday. Reason we're doing that is because something's coming on Friday that might take up our Saturday a little bit, AKA street fighter six. Unfortunately, I can't play it on stream on the Friday because I have on call that night at work, but, uh, yeah, we might run our uh, first two weeks of uh, post SummerSlam work to after, uh, like during Raw. Sorry, not after, during Raw. Because frankly, I don't watch much of Raw these days. Especially the post uh, post house show matches. And I'll, I'll be frank, I consider. Night of Champions, I consider Backlash. As far as I'm concerned, they're just glorified house shows. They couldn't even afford to bring the entire uh, Jumbotron down to, uh, or Titantron out to uh, Puerto Rico. It should say a lot. And Nick Khan's actually said that a lot of these out of out of country shows, basically they're out there right now just to solidify TV deals. Because TV deal with Puerto Rico's sort of coming up, I do believe, is what they said. And then it's, then there's a big fight with uh, BT Sports out in uh, England coming up uh, this fall. So they brought out money in the bank for this summer, July first, Canada Day, ironically. Uh, you'll get to watch some uh, afternoon wrestling on uh, Canada Day, so that'll always be fun. Is it now the Endeavortron? (laughs) 
So this being our main event here, Lucha Brothers and uh, the BCC, this is this could headline a pay per view, realistically. And it actually shows the growth of Wheeler Yuta as well, because I know we've been sitting here for a while talking about Wheeler Yuta being that young upstart guy that needed to be a part of this group, and he just didn't seem to have that swagger to him uh, in his early days. And now it's just, it's it's changed. Get up. You got another dive to take. And I will say this every time I can. Ray Phoenix is the undertaker of AEW. If you're asking what I mean by that. Jesus. The reason I called the Undertaker of AEW, simply put, he is that attraction that will attract anybody to a show, and he does not need a championship. Be great to see him with one. I'm glad he's got the AEW tag titles with his brother, but he doesn't need it. You see Ray Phoenix on the on the board, you know you're going to get a good match out of him. Nice sling blade. <laughs> ha! Claudio just getting beaten from pillar to post here. And Wheeler with, Wheeler with the block. And Claudio with the uppercut to take off the Pez dispenser head off of uh, Ray Phoenix. That honestly looked like a Pez dispenser popping off there with the way the neck snaps there. So now we should be getting into some rest spots here pretty quick because it is the picture-in-picture -picture moment. But yeah, if you guys are interested, the uh, I, I would highly recommend getting out, uh, checking out... Uh, Check out all the wrestling this weekend. Check as much as you can out. Like, I, I know personally, I'll be watching Double or Nothing. I will be... Uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to be uh, in attendance for uh, LPW yet or if I'm going to uh, watch it on the stream. I might just have it on the stream in the background here because I do have a few things I have to get to put together here. Depends how much work's coming behind me. My official quote unquote first week of ho first day of uh, holidays is effective four o'clock on Friday. So it depends how much editing I can get done for the uh, the double or nothing preview show. Hopefully I could get that all put together here earlier in the day so I could get out to a local show. But yeah, if you're just a fan of wrestling and you can't find anything to watch this weekend, uh, you're not trying hard enough. Was that like a, a flipping atomic drop? Because it sure as hell didn't look like a backbreaker. I think Phoenix over-rotated and uh, it ended up looking like an atomic drop there coming down. Make a wish. Jeez, that's old school. I love it. And I love the fact that they're going with this style here. The fact that they're going with the slower style, the the rest holds, the the leg locks, right? Oh, look at this. Wheeler with the death lock in here and uh, bridging out to give the extra pay. Oh, there's the double stomp. Claudio looks so much more comfortable as a heel than he did as a face. 
especially as a heel that doesn't really have to talk a whole lot. Like, Claudio can talk. Don't get me wrong here. But talking as a face is seems to be tough for a guy like him. Sometimes, depending on who his opponent is. Ah, the good old-fashioned cravat. Shades of Chris Hero here with that uh, cravat here. I miss seeing him in the ring. I would love to see him just magically show up as part of the BCC as the kings of wrestling. It's like, oh, no. And just go right into the swing. That is hilarious. And Wheeler hits the stop on it real quick. So we got about eight minutes here. Recall a bomb into a code red. I love that. I love that counter. Come on. Here we go. Okay, we got a trios match on... Uh, oh, yeah, okay. LFI versus the Acclaim coming up on Rampage. Britt and Sheila versus Rose and Shafir. Okay. Big Bill Moriarty versus Best Friend. So, yeah, they're... Like I said, the one thing I enjoy about AEW is for their big pay-per-views, they take over a town for an entire week. Like, they're at the MGM Grand all week here. So every mat, every show here gets to feel a little bit more special. Like, if they're not going to do a big stadium show, why not do a week at a venue? Looking at their schedule events, it's absolutely packed. Absolutely it is. They got they got a fan fest going on. They want to eventually have it so that they could be the WrestleMania weekend. I would think that would be the goal of any major company. To make it that you are the focus of the wrestling world for a week. And if Tony Khan can put on four shows and make four botches of money out of it which is what I'm thinking of when it comes to when Collision shows up. <laughs> Another Canadian Destroyer! Okay. I love I love listening to Daniel said he is so fired up. He's bringing up Regal in the conversation. That's a little far off in the rig, would you think? That's why I say it's a little far off. Okay, that's a tag team move. Rocket launcher. Holy crap. Shout out to Owen Hart. Rest in peace, Owen Hart. I want to make sure I get at least one reference of a bit of the show here tonight. That was Jim Neidhart and uh, Owen Hart. Owen used to fly like that. God. Whew. Sorry, this is the week that Owen, pa Owen passed away, so.
Yeah, I don't know if it was an intentional tribute, but I'll take it as one anyway. And Alex cost a tag now. Great. Ha! I knew there was going to be interference. There you go. There you go. We knew there was going to be some kind of interference. I love how Danielson has to wait for the announcement to actually believe it's right. Dom drinks Bud Light. Uh, yeah. If I'd say a little more classy, guys. All right, now the BCC, are they going to go chase after him or are they just doing this little shot here? Oh, and here comes Mox. So where is Hangman and Hangman and Omega out of this? We know they're here. So, maybe they're doing Anarchy in the Arena as the main event. That would make a little bit of sense. <laughs> well, Mox, you might as well just start bleeding right now, just because, you know, might as well get started. Because didn't they do Anarchy in the Arena as the main event? No, they didn't do that last year. It was the year before they did that as the main event. Because I was a stadium stampede that year. Wonder if we get Wild Thing for 10 minutes. Hey, we haven't heard it in a while. So we got, you, you know, you got to get your money's worth out of that song. At least it's, at least by playing that. A lot of streamers will get uh, auto flag for streaming the show because, you know, the copyright music and such. That's actually really smart by AEW if they do that to uh, cut people off and make sure that they don't uh, stream the show illegally. So a good a good finish to the show and a really solid show getting things going. Um, it is pay-per-view week, so we did have a little taste of some of the matches we're going to get coming up on Sunday. Um, nothing, I would say nothing too spectacular. The, uh, in, in terms of, uh, forwarding the storyline, it's going to outshine on the, outshine the pay-per-view. I would say the, uh, Kyle Fletcher, uh, Orange Cassidy match delivered as always, and it tells the story of this could be the final ride for Orange Cassidy here at the pay-per-view. So did it do enough to sell the pay-per-view? That's what I'd ask you guys in chat. Do you think that there was enough here to sell the pay-per-view to you if you didn't watch but prior to this? My opinion is possibly. If there's anything in particular you, you, you're looking for, one, one thing I will say, previous years, I didn't even have to question it. It was automatic. Yes, the action is set up to, to watch this pay-per-view. This year, I think there's a little bit more doubt in a lot of people. 
whether they want to watch it or not. And the fact that you have a show earlier that day in NXT Battlegrounds, you got a show the day before in uh, WWE United Champions. You got the best of Super Juniors for uh, New Japan. You got Under Siege with Impact on Friday. There's a lot of wrestling going on. And to me, this this show, for me, I, I'm more than willing to watch it. But for casuals, I don't know if this is enough to get it over. I hope it was. I hope that last promo by Moxley is enough to sell it. Especially for those people that want blood everywhere. But uh, hopefully it does enough. And I hope they do get some decent numbers for uh, pe- for people there. So... Being a holiday week in the U.S. may help a little. Absolutely. And thank you for always a friend, but mostly appreciated. I hope you have a great night. Thank you. Yeah. No work on Monday. Yeah. Like, like we were mentioning, ticket sales are a little spry compared to what they were previous years. I hope this brought a lot of people that showed up here for Dynamite tonight, probably on a cheaper ticket, to come out and watch the pay-per-view on Sunday. I really hope that worked. But... We'll, we'll see. It's pro- it's going to be a decent card regardless. So I, I'm looking forward to uh, looking forward to seeing what's going to happen here as we're going along here. But.